Well, after six days, I can finally present to you guys my Action 6 video. Many underwear swaps later, and here we are with my look at a lot of the untested features of this camera. I have timestamps in the description if you wanna move ahead to the topic that is relevant to you. Welcome everyone to another video. Thank you so much for the support on the last video. It means the world to me. All the suggestions, all the nice comments. In this video today, we're going to be testing a lot of the things that you wanted me to test. Thank you so much again for the, your suggestions. Let's get into that video right now. I know a lot of people are trying to get their hands on the macro lens currently. I have a link in the description where you can probably get your hands on it quicker and also pay less. In the Action 6, there is two subcategories within the stabilization settings. The first of which is daily, and that is what we're in right now. DJI claims that this daily mode is best for scenes where you're walking, handheld clips like this, doing travel vlogging, and also POV shots without extreme movement. How do you think this fares in the daily setting? Let me know in the comments. Skinniest in the world. I've now switched my stabilization setting from daily to sport in the horizon steady mode. Does this make any bit of difference to the stabilization on this camera? On my last video, there were so many comments that were speaking poorly about the stabilization that was in this camera. So I wonder if we should also be using the sport mode in walking sort of conditions, despite it saying that we should be doing so only for fast paced movements like cycling. Calling this next POV angle shot, doggo vision. 100% of the first person to test this and listen to this dog. <laughs> if you didn't know, now you know. It's doggo vision. When it comes to overall fun that you can have with an action camera, that is really where it excels. <laughs> this is the one thing I'll let her slobber all over. I hate it when she likes my lenses. But this one, you're allowed. You're allowed, Callie. <laughs> I gotta clean this off. This is the mounting setup today. Just have it right on this bad boy. Okay, we're testing the stabilization on this. We have no stabilization turned on. That means we're using gyro data in post when we turn that on. Doing this test because one of you requested it. So hopefully you appreciate this content. I'm gonna go back one time and then we're going to switch over now to the Rocksteady in a second here. And then Rocksteady Plus afterwards. Now let's look at how I stabilize this in Gyroflow. I wasn't able to do so in DaVinci Resolve, so I did so here using their default settings. And how do you think it looked? Okay, we have Rocksteady on. We're gonna do a back and forth here and then we're gonna see exactly how all this looks. Oh, oh I am so <laughs> My shoes are totally soaked now after that. Oh. oh. Okay, let's switch over to Rock City Plus and let's compare. Oh my God, look at my shoes. This is all shot in 4K60 and we're in Rock City Plus now. For stabilization mode, we're in the sport mode, not the daily stabilization. Let's go. Let me know your thoughts. Is this plus mode an improvement or not? Oh, that time I hit it more on the side. Should have did that from the start. <laughs> Here is now a comparison between the Action 3 and the DJI Action 6. Both are in rock steady, decent -y like on the top and on the bottom D-Log M. If you want to see a longer comparison between these two, let me know. Right now I'm in 4K 60p using regular rock steady seeing how well it works when mounted to my handlebars compared to when it was on my head previously. I have pretty good light today. It's actually some sunlight compared to the last few other days. Even going into Vancouver yesterday, we were expecting quite a bit of sunlight, didn't really receive any. So this will give you a pretty good idea how it looks more of a high contrast sort of environment where I'm rear lit. I had it set to 1600 
highest ISO currently in auto ISO. So that should give you a pretty good idea what sort of ISO response this has when you're rear lit on a bike. And all of the mountain biking videos that I've done so far in the day have had a max ISO limit of 1600. This is in variable aperture mode as well. Let's switch over to the Rocksteady Plus right now while we have some sunlight in Rocksteady Plus right now. Let's go. First, let's check out this view. How's that? Okay, we're in Rocksteady Plus now, let's go. Now that we're in decent sunlight, how does that look? All right, I'm in horizon balancing mode now, 4K 60, using the one over one inch sensor. How good of a job does this do? Balancing the footage while biking pretty erratically. Let's try now the horizon steady mode before I fall into the river. Horizon steady mode is now on. How does this mode look? If you guys appreciate these reviews, please subscribe and leave some suggestions. Well, you want me to the test? Oh, I almost fell there. <laughs> so how does this mode compare to the previous horizon balance mode? Now we're in 4K 60, no stabilization is on. Let's turn on that gyro data to see exactly how well that performs. This time I couldn't really produce anything that looked decent in gyro flow with the uh, really strange looking warping in the tree line. If you have some tips for using gyro flow, please let me know in the comments. I've sort of realized with these cameras that it's best to set it to at least negative three exposure compensation. How does this look when we're at negative three? Let's go to zero and let's see. Now we're at zero exposure compensation. Now that we're in negative seven, which one do you think will look best? I set the camera now to 800 max ISO because I know this camera really can't handle past 800 really. Even 800 I think is honestly pushing it with the small sensor it has. Don't be fooled by the one over one inch sensor thing. It's actually quite a bit smaller than that when you're using it in landscape or portrait mode. This is not a low light camera really. And action cameras never really have been meant for low light scenarios. Obviously everyone wants a low light beast action camera, but I think that really gets in the way of their, their pocket line. Not many people have covered the time warp setting yet, so here it is in 4K 30, which is the highest frame rate setting. My last video I made on the Action 6, if you haven't watched that, I'll link it right here. Go watch that after you watch this video. But in that video, I gave the portrait mode a really negative review. I think that's based on the fact that it's stuck in normal mode. You have to use auto white balance. Everything is pretty well auto. Giving it another test today to see how well it fares on the wide setting. I have it set to a little bit wider of a mode now. So there's no additional uh, cropping in required. So hoping that helps a little bit with the clarity of the image. Because I don't really like the normal colors inside the Action 6, I'm gonna use this color checker video that I've been using for my other videos in order to properly color balance the D-Log M footage, but I'm also gonna do so in this normal mode because it is 10-bit video. You should be able to push and pull the footage quite a bit still. And I would just bring this into my node workflow in DaVinci Resolve, and then you can just edit from there. I'm sure a lot of people out there aren't wanting to purchase something like this Color Checker Passport Video 2, especially if this is the only camera you're ever really going to use. So I'm going to look at creating some downloadable content, possibly off my website where you can download that in the near future. Because there's already so much content in this video, I'm going to create a DaVinci Resolve color editing video in the near future where I will have free LUTs available for download in that video.
I'm still in this portrait mode now at 4K30. And I just wanna talk about the support that you guys have given me on my last video. It means a lot to me as someone who's been making videos for close to a year now, pretty regularly. Most of the time I film these videos for basically myself. Haven't really ended up getting too much traction on this channel. So to have close to 12,000 views in this little amount of time is just incredible. So I really feel like I owe it to you guys, which is why I'm fully willing to test whatever you guys want me to test. You guys want me to do mountain biking? I, I, I'll do it, I, I did it. Like I'm here for you guys, I want you to know that. The Osmo 360 suffered some pretty serious fogging that was developed in these cameras and many, many people ended up experiencing it. Let's see if this happens at all with the Osmo Action 6. I'm gonna put it inside my fridge for five minutes and then bring it into my shower where it will have hot water running. I've already checked to see exactly how well my iPhone fared and my XM5 with the Viltrox lens and they fogged up immediately, wasn't able to see a thing. So let's see if the Action 6 can survive my fogging test. You see in a bit. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the five minute timer. Let's now bring it into the shower. Hello, hello. Okay, let's go see how it performs, whether or not it can handle this fog that's inside here. So far, this is a much different experience from what I experienced on my iPhone. Don't really see any fogging at all yet. I mean, look at the, this mirror. Some of you expressed interest in using this as a dash cam. So I'm just gonna show you what sort of clarity you can get when using this as a dash cam. I think it works pretty good in well-lit situations, but it's not gonna perform any sort of miracles in super low light conditions or if it's raining. A CPL filter would obviously help reduce some of the glare that you're seeing in the image, but you can get pretty good clarity at times being able to read license plates with this. One nice thing about this camera is they did a pretty good job with the standard de-warp setting at keeping the verticals nice and straight. So that is a plus if you like shooting architecture or real estate. Not sure exactly how well this would do for real estate footage, but gives you a good idea of the verticals you could get. I showed photo examples of the different lenses in the last video, but here is for video. Looking at the transfer speeds for JPEGs, it's around 1.31 seconds and then a one minute clip in 4K 60 with the highest bit rate settings transfers to my iPhone 15 Pro Max in two minutes and 40 seconds. Here's another comparison between the iPhone 15 Pro Max at 4K 30 on both. I'm using the Rocksteady on the DJI Action 6. How does it compare? I'm using now the action mode on the 15 Pro Max and regular Rocksteady on the DJI. It's obvious because so many people have complained about their action cameras not doing well in low light. They've really intensified the HDR effect. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the overly exposed shadows on this camera. Which of these do you think looks better straight out of camera? The iPhone actually has a fantasy little light that it turns on, making this talking head portion of this test totally irrelevant onto the next. We have now both cameras set up, auto everything, but I'm in the DaVinci Resolve app for the iPhone. How does that look in comparison? How well does it expose my face? How are the colors? Again, this is auto everything. Just to give you a little bit better of an idea of the rig that I have set up right now, using a Condor blue cable, small rig SSD mount, and then there's a Ulanzi phone mount on top there. It actually adds quite a bit of weight to the system compared to using this tiny Action 6. Now we're on the 24 millimeter lens on the iPhone, and this makes things much fairer 
because the 0.5 lens on the iPhone was not all that great. It was never really known to be that sharp, which is why in the 16 Pro and Pro Max, they ended up improving that wide angle lens. Obviously with the iPhone, you get much more flexibility and that 24 millimeter has actually a pretty good macro range as well. Although the Action 6 does pretty good now as well too. Looking at both cameras, I have the iPhone at the 0.5 lens. Which one has better close focusing capabilities? DJI Action 6 is at f4. So it should be about as good as you can get with close focus abilities. The iPhone really is best in class, having a 13 millimeter wide angle, a 24 millimeter, a 48 millimeter, and then also a 120 millimeter lens. Now I have super night mode on, brought out the clouds. You can see that it's much better exposed now in the clouds. But is the sharpness and clarity still all right? Or is this quite noisy? Anytime you boost the exposure like this, you see that is to my eyes, basically pitch black in here <laughs> due to stir up some sort of issue, especially with such a small sensor as this. This shot, I turned off the super night mode and I think the image looks way better. I'm also using the variable aperture mode. So it's around F2 in this clip. Unless you're trying to record something like the Northern Lights, I think this normal mode is more than good enough. I thought super night mode looked actually okay in this shot. It wasn't too bad, although it was more exposed than I would have liked it to be. But if there's enough light in the scene, it seems like it does an okay job and it's quite passable. Let me know what you think about this. Here's now a really brief comparison as to what you can expect if you were to use an APS-C camera and sensor. I have both cameras set to 800 ISO max with F-Log 2 on the XM5 and D-Log M on the Action 6. I wanna see if this 2X lossless crop mode actually really does anything or if you can get the same benefits in post processing. Looking now, I have the uncropped image. And we're going to compare it side by side with the 2X cropped. I have the 2X crop version on the top. Is there any difference between the two? Now let's punch in on that even more. Oddly enough, despite the exposure change, I never changed my settings between shots. What do you think? Is it a gimmick or not? Well, that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking till the end. If you have any further tests you'd like me to do, put those in the comments down below, and I'd love to try and get to those as soon as possible. I have affiliate links in the description as well. So if you do decide you want to buy any of the products today, please go down there to go do so to support this channel. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.